What's the scariest or strangest thing you've seen in a national park or national forest? Get comfy and enjoy the show if you're into it. Smash that subscribe button and spread the word about Thread Tonic. Account 1. I was traveling solo around the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State and making various stops in the Olympic National Park. I decided to stop in Quinault for the first time and took a random road that dead-ended at a beautiful spot at the edge of the Quinault River. There was an ancient footbridge that led across the river, but it looked like it might collapse if I tried to cross it, so I decided not to. It was off-season and I was not in a tourist area. I was the only one there. It was so unusually hot outside that I decided that I needed to get in that water. I backed my car all the way to the edge of the dead-end road, faced it out in the direction I would need to leave, and started hiking through thick brush, down an embankment to the edge of the water. There was no path. It was a pretty rugged area. It was mid-fall and I didn't have a suit since I didn't plan on swimming, so I just took my clothes off and got in the water in my bra and underwear. I had a nice swim, but I could not shake the feeling that I was being watched even though I was in the middle of nowhere. After about five minutes, the creepy feeling was enough for me to want to head back, so I started to climb out, turned my back to the other side of the river, and walked toward my clothes and shoes that I had left behind. When I turned around, there was a big, tall man standing in plain view, just across from me on the other side of the river, but higher up on his embankment than I was on mine. He was wearing a poncho made of animal pelts, had long hair full of sticks and twigs, and looked like he had been living out in the wild for a very long time. We stood and stared at each other, me in frozen terror, for what felt like forever, when all of a sudden he frantically took off in the direction of the footbridge leading across the water. I grabbed my car key, tried to grab my clothes and shoes, but they got tangled up in some blackberry vines, so I left everything and went running for my life, through the thick brush and blackberries, barefoot in my underwear, trying to make it to my car before he made it across the river. There was no doubt in my mind that he was trying to harm me. When I made it out of the blackberries, I could see he was crossing the bridge toward me rapidly. I got to my car and flung my door open just as he arrived. I locked the doors while he pounded on the hood of my car, just screaming and grunting non-verbally. The moment he went for my driver's side door, I hit the gas and took off as fast as I could. I looked back and he was chasing after me. He must have run after my car for at least a mile until he faded from view. I was bleeding everywhere from running nearly naked through blackberries. I was wet, unclothed, shaking and crying. Had I hesitated for literally ten seconds longer, I don't think I would have made it out alive. Even typing this story out again all these years later, I am starting to shake. I felt like I was being hunted. That is the only way I can describe it. I will never ever go back to that area. Since that moment, I always bring a hiking buddy with me when I venture out into the forest. That day is going to haunt me for life. I have had many years of therapy, and that experience is still as vivid as the day it happened. Account 2. Once I was driving into Yosemite at 4 a.m., saw something in the road as I came around a corner and slammed on my brakes. It turned out to be a wolf. Several years later, I mentioned this to someone offhand, and they said Yosemite didn't have any wolves. I looked it up and they have exactly one wolf in the park. I realized I nearly plowed through Yosemite's one single wolf. I am very glad I managed not to. Account 3. Saw a toad that looked like it weighed 10 pounds. Illogically huge. It stayed still and just looked at me. I just carefully went on my way in silence. Over the night I could hear it off in the distance from my tent. Account 4. I was chilling in a hammock and my family started yelling at me to run away. Turns out, there was a bear right near me. I slowly walked away and the bear ate some berries by the hammock. Account 5. If anyone wants a good spooky podcast, there is one called Park Predators, and it is about the countless bodies, murders, and serial killers in state and national parks. The Yosemite serial killer is what got me into true crime. I live in the area. Account 6. My friend and I would go camping pretty often near a pond and a big clearing that pretty much nobody knew about. We had never seen signs of anyone else being there, and it's hard to get to. It is on the edge of a national park of forest in California. 
One morning, when we pulled the truck up to the area we parked before the hike in, we saw two mountain lions having sex. That alone was enough for us to just call the trip a loss and turn back, but we decided to stick around for a bit to watch the lions. They finished up their business pretty quickly and kind of just hung around the area, so it was cool to see them. After about 10 minutes, they perked up and were on alert. We had the windows up, obviously, so we couldn't hear anything. They got scared and ran off, and from the direction they ran away from, three deer came running through with a big bear chasing them. We haven't been back to that spot. Count seven. Scariest was a group of tourists, I'm guessing, at the Ho Rainforest in the Olympic National Park who thought it was a good idea to take pictures posing with huge elk. Some people were even making their kids go over and pose with these wild animals. I'm pretty sure it was during the elk mating season, too. We and other people shouted at them to not get close to the elk, but they didn't listen to us. Luckily, nothing happened. Account 8. In maybe 1990, 1991, my five-foot-tall English-born grandmother got out of our car in Yellowstone to snap a photo of a bear and its cubs. She got between the cubs and the mother bear while my parents and our other car with my cousins and aunts in it were screaming at her. She just got back in the car and was like, what? I have all my grandparents' slide film. I need to go through it and see if I can find that shot. Account 9. The unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAP, I saw hovering over arches a couple of weeks ago. Pitch black outside near delicate arch watching planes and stars and the occasional satellite pass overhead. Then one of the points of light that I thought was a star started jumping around. It would zip left, then down, then stop, then start again. We watched it for over 10 minutes. I have no idea what it could have been. Account 10. A buddy and I were on a camping trip in the Pudra Canyon outside Fort Collins, Colorado. It was late in the season, so all of the campgrounds were closed. We found a random spot off of a random road. Both of us have a ton of experience and had camped all over Colorado and Utah, but something about this particular spot was just off. Almost immediately, we found a blanket wrapped around a deceased skeletal animal. We assumed it was just a pet that someone had thrown out, but it set the mood. We went hiking, climbed up a few hills, and came across an abandoned tent wrapped up in a tree. I was certain we were going to find a body in it, but it was just filled with notebooks and a sleeping bag. We started hiking down the hill and ended up walking down the side, very steep. As we were traversing down, we were hit with the smell of death. Nestled into a tree on the side of a very steep hill was a small towel with something clearly inside of it. We left it be and hiked down. This was probably 200, 300 feet up the side of a steep hill with the towel in a tree facing the top of the hill, clearly intentionally placed here. We downed some bourbon, built up some courage, and hiked back up. Grabbing a stick, we opened up the towel. Inside, a very recently deceased owl. Somehow, someway, someone had killed this owl, wrapped it in a towel, hiked up a steep hill off a random mountain road, and stuck it beside a tree. We started a fire, slammed the bourbon, and got the heck out of there in the morning. Account 11. Was in Algonquin Park and packing up my stuff into my car after a seven-day canoe trip. All of a sudden, I hear excited chatter two cars over and this giant bull moose saunters through the parking lot. I hide behind my car and take pictures of video, of course, but some Asian tourist tried to get right up to it and pet it. Thankfully, it wasn't mating season, and before the tourist could touch it, the bull looked at the tourist, gave a snort, and took off into the forest. The tourist chased after him trying to get a selfie, but thankfully, the moose is much faster than the tourist. I still can't believe that someone would go up to a fully grown bull moose and try to pet it. I was fully expecting to see an actual Darwin Award in real life. Account 12. My dad and I set up a game cam this summer out in a valley where there's frequently elk. He had a hunt coming up and wanted to get a look at the area. We left it out there for about two weeks and came back to grab it. The most recent picture on the camera when we pulled it was from about three hours before we got there and it was of a mountain lion standing right where we were as we were looking through the pictures. It was a rather tense hike back across the valley to our jeep. 13. Raccoons. They get up to all kinds of mischief in the middle of the night. It's not quite so adorable when they're trying to break into your car and steal your bacon. Account 14. My uncle's a trucker. He was once going up the mountains in South Queensland and had to stop on the side of the road to take a leak. This was around 11 p.m. at night. It was quiet except for the occasional other car passing. 
Oh, and the giant thumping noise coming from the trees. Emus don't go up that high, and if it was a kangaroo, it would have run off before being heard, same as a wallaby. Cassowaries don't go that far south, so it was either a very fat mountain goat or our version of Bigfoot. These are my uncle's words, not mine. Count 15. At Arches, there was a girl so terrified at Delicate Arch, she was screaming and not getting out of anyone's way. Her boyfriend was three feet away from her saying, you're okay, while swiping on his phone. 16. I was camping in the Amazon forest here in Brazil, and I woke up in the middle of the night because I needed to pee really bad. I walked a little bit away from the camp so I wouldn't wake anyone up and lowered my pants and started peeing. I am a girl, so I kind of sat down but without touching the ground for obvious reasons. There was only the moonlight and everything was really dark and I was really nervous when I felt and heard something walking behind me very close. I don't know what that was, but it felt really big and I was already thinking that I would die right there half naked and no one would even know what happened. Anyway, I finished as soon as I could and ran back to the tent shaking. I still wonder what kind of animal or person that was, but as I was in the middle of the Amazon, it could actually be anything. Account 17. I saw a large, deep, rectangular pit in the middle of a national forest. It looked like someone was about to be buried. I carefully walked away as quietly as I could, afraid I'd fall into a different pit with a body in it. The mind can play some mean tricks on a person. Account 18. I was working with a grad student out in the Jornada del Muerto one summer in college. Just vast desert and dirt roads, bison and prairie dogs. One day, we got caught in a torrential downpour while out in the field. We rushed back to camp in a hurry before the roads became impassable. As we drove through the rain, we passed by a huge yucca bush, completely engulfed in bright orange flames, burning so fiercely that the pouring rain did nothing at all to douse the flames. We didn't stop to ponder what we were seeing, but it freaked me out slightly. It was so uncanny. I guessed that the bush had been struck by lightning, but it still seemed bizarre and symbolic in some way. Count one. First time ever camping, it was for a field trip in seventh grade. God, I was miserable and I hated it, and I didn't want to be away from home. It was about five hours away. I couldn't sleep, so I got up in the middle of the night and walked outside, and I sat with a little book light to read in front of the cabin. I was so obsessed with Christopher Pike at that age, holy shit. Anyway, I was super unnerved, but I couldn't stand going back into that cabin and laying on this stupid, awful wooden manger type cot, so I stayed right there by the door. I had this weird feeling like I was being watched, but felt safe enough because it was camp. But every now and then I just couldn't stop glancing up. It just felt weird, I can't explain it, like hair on the back of your neck standing up weird. I guess I happened to move my book just right because the light caught on a pair of glowing eyes, like an animal, right in front of me. As a kid, I felt like they were right in front of me, but must have been down the steps and a few yards back. Because I dropped the book and the light fell off to the side, I could just barely see that it was a goddamn mountain lion. I couldn't even see the full thing at first, just a paw, but then I followed it up. It saw me, and I saw it, and I could not move. In my mind, I knew two things. One, if I didn't move, someone was going to find a blood trail and then my half-eaten corpse. And two, if I got attacked by a mountain lion because I was doing something I wasn't supposed to, my dad would be so mad. I have no idea how long I fumbled. It couldn't have been more than a few seconds, but it felt like ten years. I reached up behind me until I found the door handle and twisted until I fell into the cabin backward. Closed the door and got back into my stupid bed and laid there until sunrise. One girl woke up and I just told her the wind must have made the door bang. In the morning, our teacher came to wake us up and I got in trouble for leaving my library book outside. I didn't want to get in even more trouble, so I didn't tell anyone what happened. TLDR, I almost got eaten by a mountain lion. Count two, Cub Scouts. After staying late telling ghost stories, me and a friend snuck out to wander around at night, armed with nothing but a flashlight. We were walking along a paved path when we hear clicking footsteps just behind us. I shine the light behind us and only see glowing eyes and a silhouette of antlers. My friend takes off screaming. I back off slowly after him. It was a bloody deer. Account three. This happened on private property, but it's a creepy story that took place in the woods, so it kind of qualifies. Plus, this morning was opening day for deer season. 
and we were deer hunting when it happened. My cousin owns land in western Wisconsin where there's lots of hills and lots of deer. It's tradition for all of us to hunt on his property. My dad, cousin, and all their friends pitched in to build a hunting shack on the property and put up tree stands. We hunt on a schedule so none of us hunt in the same area at the same time, both for our safety and in hopes of getting a deer. My dad and I took an ATV and headed up a hillside. The sun wasn't quite up yet and we wanted to get set for sunrise. We marked which hill we were going up on the schedule inside the hunting shack. Nobody else was there yet, but we marked it anyways in case my cousin and his daughter showed up. We waited until about 9 a.m. and didn't see a thing. Not even as much as a squirrel. We decided to go get some coffee to warm up and then head back out. I followed my dad down the path back to the ATV and we'd stop every so often to listen for deer. The only noises I heard were my footsteps and my dad's. About halfway to the ATV, I heard something else. It only happened when my dad and I walked. When my dad and I walk during deer hunting, I mimic his footsteps so we make less noise. I step at the same time as him. However, something behind me was making noise. It was like something was mimicking my footsteps. I spun around and peered into the trees. The sun still wasn't over the top of the hill yet, so we were in quite a bit of shade. I didn't see anything, so I continued to follow my dad down the hill. But I heard it again. This time I turned around when we were still walking and I saw something duck behind a tree. A pale face poked out from about 30 yards up the hill and hid behind the tree again. It poked out again and this time stayed staring down at us. I stopped and hit my dad's shoulder. He turned and saw it too. Get to the four-wheeler, he whispered and I didn't hesitate. I stared it down as my dad started up the ATV and as we departed, the face's dark little shoulder came out from behind the tree followed by the rest of its gnarled, malformed body. My dad hit the throttle and we got back to the hunting shack as soon as we could. Nobody else was there, so we got in the truck and left. I haven't been in those woods since. My dad was and got a deer this morning and acts like this never happened. I still think about it far too often. Account four. Was camping and there was a stream with a concrete bridge spillway. Me being the fish and wildlife nerd I am, went into the creek to catch darters and crawfish. I was walking back, felt something brush my leg, looked down and saw an almost 4FT copperhead carrying a 3FT decapitated water snake with it. Account 5. I was going for a hike in the national park near my town, Piatra Cryolui, Romania, next to Brand Dracula's castle, and I was wearing my headphones. It was 6 a.m. on the 28th of December, I think 2017. I walked on the trail for a bit when I heard a sneeze. I was like WTF and pulled out my headphones but continued to walk. A few seconds later, I heard it again. Just now it was closer. I realized that was no sneeze. It was freaking wolves. I ran down the mountainside, knife in one hand, stick in the other until I got to the road, about five minas. Last time I went by myself on the mountain in winter. TLDR, Wolfpack. Account 6. When I was a kid, maybe 10, my parents took our family of four to Mark Twain National Forest. We did not go to a campground. For whatever reason, we arrived around dusk and we had to hurry to set up camp. Soon after, we discovered that we had forgotten a lantern and it became very dark. My stepfather was an alcoholic and a mean drunk to boot, so there was a lot of yelling, and instead of lighting a campfire, we went to bed. As we all lie there trying to sleep, we begin to hear dead leaves rustle in the distance, as if someone were walking through the forest. Time was passing slowly as we listened to the sound getting closer. My sister, 12, my mother, my drunk stepdad, and myself were petrified, hoping that since we have no lights and because the person walking through the forest didn't have a flashlight, we may avoid notice. A few moments later, as the sound of shuffled walking was within just a few yards, the stranger stepped on a twig and it snapped. My father belted out a blood-curdling scream and my mother shrieked, Let's get out of here! All four of us bolted out of the tent toward the car, my brave parents in the lead. After a few terrifying moments, we reached our Honda Civic hatchback and we took off for home. We never went back for our things and I hate camping to this day. I am 43 and I still dream about this. Account 7. Did not necessarily happen to me, but happened to my mom when she was pregnant with me. She was out jogging in some forest in Alaska. She would do this daily. After some time, she noticed some people frantically trying to get her attention. 
She had headphones in, so she could not hear them, so she stopped and asked them what was up. They told her that they had been trying to get her attention for a while because a big grizzly bear had been chasing after her as she was jogging, but eventually, and very thankfully for me, stopped chasing her for whatever reason. Account 8. Scariest thing? A chipmunk. Hiking a narrow trail cut into the side of a ridge in Ventana National Forest, California. In the middle of the trail was a mangy chipmunk with only about half its fur still attached running around in circles. No way to get past. I threw a rock at it to try and scare it into running off the trail and the bloody thing ran straight at me. Nearly had a heart attack as it ran past and kept going down the trail. Area known for rabies and bubonic plague. Count nine. Also the most beautiful thing, a herd of buffalo. Hundreds of them, all nearly the size of cars. I was in Yellowstone. It took two hours for them to cross the road and for traffic to continue through the park. One brushed up against my car and the whole car shifted. It was crazy. Count 10. I found a bone altar once and a severed human hand in two different instances. Edit. When I was eight or nine, my mom took me to a reservoir that I think was in it near a national park. She made baskets and things from natural materials and I went along to help collect. I wandered off a little and I was picking up trash. My mom gave me a nickel for each piece of trash I found and things in a bag and a basket for collecting things. I saw what I thought but was a discarded glove on the lake shore and went to pick it up so I could put it in my bag and well, it wasn't a glove. It was someone's left hand from about a few inches the wrist into the arm. The person had been in the water a few days and I picked up their severed hand. I started screaming and I guess my hands clenched onto the dead hand. My mom came running and had to pry my hands open to drop it. We went to the closest gas station to call the cops, early mid-90s and pre-cell phones, and they went out and collected it. From what I learned later, there had been a group of drunk teenagers with a power boat and one had fallen in or something and gotten hit by the boat. I found that chunk of him. They tried to convince me at the time it was a bear paw. I didn't talk for about two months and I still have problems with recently dead things. As to the bone altar, I went hiking, camping in college, intending to make it to an area in southwestern Colorado. I had a stressful spring semester and needed space from people. I heard a group of people coming as I was heading back and went off into the woods to avoid them. During my detour to avoid them, I got into a patch of thick woods. I ended up coming along all I could call an altar of sorts made out of all kinds of bones of different creatures. It was sort of table-shaped, and someone had strung up different bones and bits of metal on strings all around the area. I was so creeped out, I backtracked back to the trail and got back to my car and left as quickly as I could. Haven't gone camping since. Account 11. I was driving home from Yosemite four years ago, and I stopped on the side of the road to go pee. I then heard birds in the distance completely stop chirping. It was around 5 p.m. BTW. I knew that a bear was nearby, so I cut it short and started to walk back to my car, which was like 30 feet away. Just as I turned around to walk back, I heard an insanely loud sound that was like a mix between a scream and an air raid siren. It sounded really close, and I knew for a fact that it wasn't a bear or cougar anymore, and I've never heard something so strange and loud, so I ran as fast as I could back to my truck and started it. Right before I drove off, I heard it again, but it was even louder, and it sounded even more creepy. I still think about it until this day, and I still don't know what kind of creature it could have been. Can someone please convince me that what I heard was normal, or if it was some kind of cryptid? Please help. I am terrified to go in the woods. Account 12. Two park rangers emerged from the bushes while a friend and I were smoking a bowl in Acadia National Park. What would have been a slap on the wrist became a felony charge because it was on federal property. Luckily, we were teenagers, so it was expunged from our records after a few years. I desperately still wish that I had the letter that arrived at my parents' house with the header, The United States of America versus My Name. Account 13. Doing some backcountry skiing went back up my old track for a second loop. Big-ass cougar prints, just following my old track back and forth, stalking me. Like not fist-sized, nearly spread hand-sized. Never did see it. Broke down at the top of a ridge line. Walked ten miles back to camp, slowly, with a bad limp from a sprained knee. A black bear followed me at about 50 yards away the whole time. Less scary, but I was injured so. I found some weird shit, too. 
like Wiccan circles and such, once with a central cage and some animal remains in it. Account 14. While working at a corn farm in the middle of a national park in Ohio, I was driving a gator around one of our biggest fields to pick up raccoon traps. At the back of the field, I turned around a corner and saw a swollen deer carcass under a tree. While the bloated deer was somewhat of a disturbing sight in and of itself, it took me a few seconds to realize that perched in the branches above were around 100 turkey vultures sitting in silence, staring directly at me. I put the gator in reverse and noped the fuck out of there. Count 15. Not national, but a nearby county forest. Went hiking on the trails with my family about a month and a half ago. The next week, we saw that a body had been discovered next to the same trail. The body was of a United executive who had been missing for over a year. We walked right past his corpse, but didn't notice. Account 16. Finally, something I can contribute to. One day, my friend and I decided to go camp at Sequoia National Park for the weekend. I like to leave pretty late so I can get to the park to set up camp, see the stars, and wake up to hit the trails and sights before everyone gets there. We're driving there in the middle of the night, and once we get to the main road, I notice a weird sort of glinting off the light from my headlights. I get closer and I start to see a full-on cow in the middle of the road, all the way up in the national park by the mountains. I was so shocked because there was no obvious farms nearby and the mountains were heavily sloped. Account 17. This wasn't in a national park, but a local forest preserve. Used to bike a lot when I was 12, 13, and stumbled across one baby doll hanging from a twine noose. I backpedaled onto the actual trail and got out of there fast. Account 18. The first time I went camping with friends while we were cooking and the sun went down, I heard a loud growl right behind us. Scared the crap out of me, also once staying at my ex's cabin in the woods. We heard what sounded like people having a conversation outside. This was nighttime in the middle of Mount Baker National Forest, so nobody was around. That we know of. Account 1. I moved to the woods a few years ago. Huge black bears, yes. Kind of scary. But there's been other weird stuff. Once, walking with my 16-year-old niece in the woods, I heard a deep, mean growl two feet from us. It was a pretty open area. We both looked at each other and freaked out. This wasn't a growl from a bear or cougar or any animal I could think of. We ran back to the house. Also, my daughter came running to me asking if I called her, saying she heard me say, come here. I was inside and never said a word. A neighbor recently told me she sees a woman in 1800s clothing in her home and also in the woods. She has also seen a little girl in a white nightgown with dark hair. Both are not friendly. Also seen deer not acting normal. Account 2. Went camping with a friend, both about 9 or 10, and we decided to explore the woods at night. We were about 5 minutes away from the campsite. The stars were stunning and it was wild that you could hear and kind of see some wildlife. We were walking back and I turned around. I could hear something trailing behind us. I asked her to flash her light and there was this thing in the distance. We could only see the outline of it, but my gut was telling me to run. We took off running and I could hear the thing barreling after us. We were close to the campsite, so whatever it was, stopped following us the moment we made it onto the site. We assumed it was a monster or a beast. Now, I clearly remember the shape of the thing. It was a person. Account 3. My two buddies and I encountered a black bear in Olympic National Park that confirmed that black bears cannot be outrun. We were on the west side of the park at the start of a week-long backpacking trip, driving to a campsite. From the side of the forest road, a black bear busted through the bushes and onto the road in front of me. I was cruising along at 25.30 mph, and the bear swerved away from my car and turned up the road. It proceeded to accelerate away from my car in the time I took to realize what was happening. Breathtaking. Easily 300 LEBIs of black bear running at better than 30 mph, like a thoroughbred horse with claws and teeth. As he put a distance between himself and my car, he looked over his shoulder as if to make his point and bounded back into the brush beside the road. Humans cannot outrun a bear. Account 4. The time I sat in a meadow on Isle Royale, Lake Superior, and within moments I was covered in butterflies. Do not wear a flowered shirt in the wilderness unless you want to attract bees or butterflies. Account 5. While my boss and I were hiking about four miles deep into the woods in the North Georgia area, not really hiked too often, 
we encountered a group of people wearing a bunch of animal masks like rabbit, raccoon, squirrel, bear, etc. They were all gathered around a fire with music playing from a Bluetooth speaker. I waved and kept going and found a way to turn around without walking back by and got out of there. They didn't say anything or wave back, but it was definitely a strange thing to witness. Also, just random stairs not attached to anything deep in the middle of nowhere, basically. Account 6. There's a national park a few hours drive from us that my family likes to camp in every year. We usually drive down old logging roads and find random locations to camp instead of using the campground. It's more private, and we've found some awesome spots over the years. When I was 13, we found a really cool spot nestled between two large ponds. You follow this logging road for a few miles, and then it slowly starts to turn into overgrowth. Lots of little hills and downed trees, tall weeds, etc. At the time, we didn't have a vehicle capable of four-wheel drive, so we lugged our gear on foot and set up on the hill between the ponds. Everything went smoothly until about 2 a.m. Out of nowhere, two massive black trucks came roaring in. These trucks were literal clown cars jam-packed with dudes. They completely ignored our camp, completely ignored our family asking what they were doing so late, didn't pay us any mind at all. They all got out of the trucks, waded into the ponds with nets, spent a little over an hour kidnapping frogs, piled back into their trucks and left with the frogs from the pond. They did this completely silently. No lights, no talking, just quietly walking through the pond, skimming nets along. When we arrived, the ponds were overrun with frogs, and listening to them all was really cool. After the frog kidnapping, the ponds were silent and still. The following morning, we found a lone survivor with an injured leg and returned him to the pond. But the ponds stayed silent the rest of the camping trip. Frog isn't a terribly popular dish around here, but I assume they took the frogs to eat. The silent abductors were super strange, though. You'd think they'd be like, whoa, hey, sorry to intrude, just frog hunting or that they'd at least use flashlights. We've camped that spot a few times since then, and we've never encountered the frog kidnappers again. The following year, same park but different spot, we got robbed by a bear. Someone left an opened pack of marshmallows in the beer cooler and didn't shut the lid correctly. We woke up sometime in the very early morning hours to see a black bear casually carrying off our cooler. That morning we did recover the cooler, but the marshmallows were gone and he squished a few beer cans in the process of his theft. Account 7. I worked in Yellowstone for a summer. I was coming back into the park late one night and came across a car that had plowed right into a bison. The really creepy thing was that the driver was nowhere to be seen. The car was just sitting in the road with the lights still on while the still alive bison lay there twitching. Realistically, I'm sure the driver just caught a ride with someone else to get help, but I couldn't help but picture someone bleeding and stumbling their way through the pitch-dark wilderness. This was back when there was very little cell service in the park, so I had to drive on for another 15 minutes until I got to a campground with a working payphone. To this day, I still don't know exactly what happened or if the driver was okay. Account 8. On a trail outside Round Meadow in Sequoia National Park, I was taking a walk with a tour guide friend. We rounded a corner on the trail, stumbled upon a black bear on his hind legs, about five feet tall, within three feet of us. Following the advice of a ranger, I held out my hand and introduced myself to the bear. He just sauntered away. We heard a noise in the tree above us. It was the mama bear sliding down toward us. We ran like hell! Account 9. My brother and I were hiking and camping through a provincial park in Alberta, Canada, when we came across a young man who had taken his own life. He was pretty far off the beaten path, and we had no cell service. We had to hike back and report it so the authorities could come get him. Count 10. Drove up the east coast of Australia with some mates to camp in national parks and get ludicrously intoxicated. We brought with us a liquor store's worth of booze, bags of weed, and several handfuls of magic mushroom caps. Since I wasn't driving, I decided to eat eight of the caps before we even left our border. By the time we entered the national park and started setting up our campsite, the sun was already setting and I was already hallucinating, meaning I was a completely unhelpful but hilarious mess of a camper. Q grilling over the fire, drinking whiskey, and smoking gigantic joints. At around midnight, my normal bodily functions returned in earnest, and we realized that we hadn't even looked for a restroom before it got dark. So I grabbed a roll of toilet paper, turned on my headlamp, clutched a gigantic hunting knife between my teeth, 
and strolled a hundred or so meters to take a dump in the river. Imagine a drug-crazed man with his pants around his ankles squatting on a river bank, clutching a gigantic knife between his teeth with the light from his headlamp darting around the darkness. Everywhere I pointed the light, I would see rotten, decrepit zombies shambling out of the bush around the river bank. Never have I defecated so quickly, all the while hyperventilating and freaking out about the hallucinatory undead coming to feast on my flesh. After I got back to the campsite, the night went as well as any drug-fueled campout goes. Woke up the next morning, stepped out of my tent to take a piss only to find a public toilet block not 50 meters from our campsite. I have never laughed harder at myself than I did that morning. And that's the story of the most terrifying shit I've ever taken, in a national park no less. Account 11. A few summers ago I went solo camping in a remote part of a national forest. After setting up camp near a small, quiet lake, I was jolted awake around midnight by low, guttural growls. The growls circled my campsite, moving closer and then farther away. I shone my flashlight into the darkness. Suddenly the growling stopped and an eerie silence fell, but I saw nothing. Then out of nowhere a loud, bone-chilling howl pierced the night. It sounded almost like a wolf, but far more menacing and powerful. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and I left at dawn. Account 12. Mountain biking in Southern California came across some deer. Stopped to watch them walk by. Mountain lion jumps out of the bushes and mauls one and kills it right in front of us. I've had five mountain lion encounters, including that one, and it is always intense. Account 13. I was at Grand Teton National Park. We'd taken a boat across Jenny Lake and were hiking back around. On the way back, we were passing a family with a couple of kids that were just goofing off and being kids. One of the boys trips and his head hits right on a rock. It was seriously the worst sound I've heard in my life. And he starts screaming in pain. It was scary because we were three or four miles from the visitor center. It's not like anyone could call an ambulance. I really hope he was okay. Account 14. I was once hiking with an acquaintance in the wilds of West Virginia. Little did I know, my trip was about to get even wilder than the wilderness around me. My friend had a small bag of Cheerios and wanted to eat them. So what he did was he got out his bowl, scooped up some mountain water, poured a small amount of Cheerios onto the water, then poured powdered milk on the cereal, then started chowing down. It was goddamn bizarre. He didn't mix it or anything. I had seen him eat cereal before and he usually just did it the normal way. I guess the lack of normal liquid milk led him to trying strange ways of eating cereal with powdered milk. I remember he gave me some explanation of why he did it the way he did it, but I don't remember the explanation. Account 15. In increasing scale of scariness, waking up to the sound of a bear swimming to your tent camp in the early morning hours, hearing the telltale sniff behind your shoulder and seeing a sow and cub 15 meters away after they've followed your trail to your survey, hazing off a wounded boar from your tent camp that lost the nearby moose cache you boated by earlier in the day, it starts to leave, and then turns right around again, and again, and again, spending 48 hours in a remote plywood cabin in a sustained 40 miles per hour, Willowa, hearing the loose pumice slam and scour the wood and feeling the building absorb each successive shockwave. Crossing a glacial river with a 50 LBS pack knowing a misstep might be your last. The scariest? The sound of your single engine plane cutting out as your tank runs out of fuel. Full disclosure, I work in that national park with all the salmon-eating bears. Account 16. Not so much what I saw, but what I dreamt. I was in Sequoia National Park last year, camping in the bed of my truck. Before I went to sleep, I crawled up on top of a boulder to look at the stars. While up there, I found mortar bowls and sharpening crevices left there by Native American tribes. In the middle of the night, I thought I woke up, and suddenly I was no longer in my truck or near any kind of campground, but in the middle of the forest in my sleeping bag. I looked to the left of me, and there was what appeared to be a writhing mass of hundreds of black eel-like snakes slithering past me on the ground. Then, out of the mass of snakes, a rattlesnake appeared and attempted to bite me through my sleeping bag. After kicking out a few times, it re-entered the column of snakes and disappeared. I then looked to see where the snakes were going, and they were crawling into the sliced open stomach of a large black horse that I was resting my head on. After seeing that, it gave me such a scare that I woke up jumping out of my truck. To this day, I've never had a dream like that, 
And I'm not much of a superstitious man, but I feel it had something to do with the carvings in the rock and the spirits of those who lived there before. Account 17. My dad used to tell a story about a deer hunt he went on out west. The guy who owned the ranch had mentioned something about a cougar taking out some cattle, and they were going to get the dogs out and tree it later that week, but to look out for it while he was out there. So dad's like walking out to the blind or tree stand or whatever at like 4 a.m. before shooting light, and on the edge of this field he heard the grass shifting slowly, kind of like a mountain lion slinking through. Dad gets all paranoid and kind of holds up and waits to see if this thing's gonna come out of the grass towards him. He said about 10 minutes pass and nothing happens, and as soon as he turns his back to keep walking, he just hears a loud rustle and sound of grass and whatnot crunching. He spins around thinking a mountain lion is about to just maul him, and a frickin' turkey just barrels out of the field right at him and past him flapping its wings. To this day, neither of us has seen turkeys out of their roost that early, but it's a pretty hilarious story. Does really well at deer camp now. Account 18. Most islands off the coast of Thailand are national parks. Once I walked from one side of an island to the other. On my way back, I came across a quartet of wild piglets with little racing stripes. The scariest part was when the sow snorted in the direct opposite direction from the piglets. I stood perfectly still. She snorted again and the piglets disappeared into the brush. I stayed perfectly still for another 10 minutes. Account 1. Last summer I was walking along a dirt road in Dixie National Forest. I noticed a lean-to shelter when I came around a bend in the road. It didn't seem inhabited at the time, so I looked into the open end facing away from the road. Yeah, there was a homeless person masturbating inside it. Utah's really wild, man. Account 2. I'm a wetland biologist in Pennsylvania. I was in an area that was getting some restoration work done and I was flagging and mapping some wetland boundaries. There was an old farm reservoir that was being fed by a system of seeps and springs at the base of the mountain, so I was walking up to trace them back. Suddenly, as I came over the hill, there was what looked like a small hunting camp or maybe a homeless hideout. Old, rusted out furniture, a refrigerator, tuna cans, chewing tobacco cans, and a bunch of natty light beer. Whatever. Not uncommon in public lands that used to be private. Just as I turned around, there was a very well-cleaned and large German Shepherd. Great, now I'm screwed, is what I was thinking and readied my shovel handle to defend myself. The dog turned around and looked at me as if it wanted me to follow it. Now I'm thinking it's obviously someone's dog and maybe it's trying to get me to help. I followed the dog further up the hill, past the camp, and smack in the middle of the woods there were 20, 30 old ratty dolls buried up to their necks with their arms pointed up and towards a large deer carcass looped up into the tree. I turned around and walked back to the reservoir and then out of the woods and back to the truck. I was getting married in a month. I wasn't prepared to deal with someone being sacrificed or trying to sacrifice me. About a six mile hike off of 119 on I-81S, job's done, never going back. Count three. I live next to two national forests, parks. From June to July, there was a horrific fire that prompted evacuations. My family had about three hours to pack anything of value. Luckily, we didn't end up having to evacuate. I had just gotten off work and so had my dad. I told them we should really consider evacuating. They didn't take my advice at first, but then we saw the mountain burning. First thing I did was get all of our legal documents, birth certificates, medical files, etc. That took about half an hour. Next, I helped my sister pack and get through her panic attacks. She was eight at the time. It was absolutely heart-wrenching having to tell her that we couldn't take all of her stuffed animals, and she had to pack only a few. I had to talk her out of only bringing her stuffed animals. I ended up packing a lot for her because she was just so sad. She ended up settling on a few of her favorites, and an elephant stuffed animal she got from an ambulance when she was four. Next, I checked on my other sister. She was oddly calm. She packed everything she wanted into a small bag, and that was it. I went to help my parents, but they told me to go pack my stuff. I ended up packing some expensive stuff, like my purse collection. I also packed important items and my artwork, and then had a mental breakdown. It was summer, and I was on the top floor. I ended up overheating, and yeah, it was bad. Next was packing animal stuff. At the time, we had 12 hens, two guinea pigs, and two dogs. We packed food for everyone and started getting stuff together. 
Harnesses, water bottles, food, bedding, hay, etc. By now the fire was halfway down the mountain. I grabbed the guinea pigs and put them in their transport cage. Put them by the door. My dad took a trailer from his boss. I wasn't allowed to help take anything outside as I have life-threatening asthma and it would have been bad. Anyway, we eventually got everything moved, taken out, and by then it was night. The fire had gotten to the base of the mountain on one side. We were all exhausted. I asked my parents if we could leave, but they said not yet. I have no idea how I fell asleep. But my sisters and I all slept next to the front door that night. It was very mesmerizing. I have no idea why, but I was in a trance. It was midnight, but the flames from the burning mountain lit up the sky. It was eerie and haunting, almost beautiful. The orange flames, purple smoke, and moonlight. Awful to say, I know, but it was like a painting. Anyway, about 2 a.m., I woke up. The mountain was still burning, but the thousand-foot flames were completely gone. I woke everyone up, and we were all so grateful. A few of us were crying from joy. Several local fire departments had set up a fire line that night. That's what saved us. In the end, nobody died. A local firefighter was severely burned, but he's since recovered and is attending physical therapy. He was released from the hospital about a month or two ago. The night before we were prepping for evacuation, a bucket helicopter crashed. Again, nobody died. One house and several government buildings were burned. In total, about 35,000 acres were burned. That's the most horrific thing I've ever seen, though. I think the reason we were so affected by this is because we have had a house fire before. We were so lucky that this time we got to pack and rescue our animals. Rip lady, you were the best lil' dog. Also, I rippy thunder. My poor bird passed away from a horrible accident. Rip Rex, our fox, I work at an animal sanctuary, who died of heat stroke and heart attack from the fire. You'll all be missed. Account 4. In San Francisco, California, there is an amazing park you can pay to go into. It's an amusement park with different sections planted with natural trees from different countries. To be in Japan and then walk further to find yourself suddenly in Africa is pretty weird and breathtaking at the same time. Highly recommend this place. Account 5. I was camping in Grand Teton National Park at Coulter Bay Campground right by Jackson Lake. My buddies and I just turned in for the night around 1 a.m. Right as I was drifting asleep, I heard the most guttural animal scream. It sounded like one animal was attacking another. This went on for a few minutes. It sounded more feline than a bear, but I'm no expert. I quietly whispered, You heard that, right? And both my friends responded, Yup. Then we pretended like it didn't happen so we could actually get some sleep and had to camp there for a few more nights. We were camping in some of the farthest back campsites they had, and we didn't have anyone camping in the sites next to us, diagonally or straight across. We were basically alone. For sure unnerving, but that's why we had a hatchet and bear spray in the tent. Count six. I was at Redwood National Park, looking at a tree, obviously. I walked up to the base of the tree, sizing it up, I had never seen a California redwood in person before. It was awe-inspiring. Above me, I heard the sound of crackling branches and leaves, and all of a sudden, before I could look up, three feet away from me, crash. A branch the size of a ladder smashed into the ground. Not a huge piece of wood, but it impacted the ground with enough force for me to realize I wouldn't have been able to walk out of that park. Made me appreciate things a bit more intimately. Account seven, people. It is always people. I couldn't put my finger on one event, but if you are a hiker or backpacker, there is always a little unease seeing someone when you have not passed another soul in hours. 99% of folks are amazing, but there is always a weird sense of being outside of the constraints of society when you are that isolated. It makes you aware that if this person was an axe murderer, relying on the fact that it would be illegal to axe you in broad daylight is tragically less important than it is in your day-to-day -day life. I assume it feels somewhat like what life in the early American West was like. People also do things on the trail which make sense, but would strike you as a warning sign in different circumstances. I know lots of people who sing to themselves or hang bells on their packs when hiking in bear country to avoid startling any mamas. Add to that that you may not have showered in a day or two. You probably look a little frayed around the edges if you have been out for a few days, etc. Suddenly your city senses are telling you this is a potentially dangerous person and you should be careful. Sprinkle in a healthy dose of how did this person get here 
When you know the area and it does not make sense that you would not have passed them before, finish with a light coat of, I am in a weird mental place because it is 2 p.m. and I have not spoken to another human yet today. And you have got a recipe for all kinds of paranormal stuff. God, I love hiking. Account 8. I have run into grizzly bears twice on a trail when rounding a blind corner come within 20, 30 feet accidentally. Way too close. Neither bear could have given any sort of damn I was there, thank God. The smaller of the two was an adolescent male, maybe 250 pounds. He was foraging and enjoying a good day and hardly gave me a glance. The other was a big female with two cubs. The cubs were each like St. Bernard's. But it is the moose that are the scariest. A giant, jacked, ugly, perpetually pissed off, forest-dwelling horse wearing the world's biggest hat rack on its head. Give them all the distance you would give an angry bear. These guys are always angry and looking for someone to stomp into jelly. I was also in Glacier Park. Got out of my car in a parking lot, and this ram sent me right back inside. He was huge and solid muscle. If he rammed a person, they would just come apart. Out 9. 6 a.m. in Yellowstone. My husband and I are hiking essentially alone in a gorgeous part of the park, and we suddenly hear this insane drumming. It is so loud it rumbles the ground beneath us and sounds like a boulder tumbling from a height, picking up speed. We end up back to back with our bear spray out because we have never heard this sound before and legitimately cannot place it. I, of course, think it is a bear, having never encountered one or heard its growl. It is a motherfucking ruffled grouse, a chicken-sized bird that can flap its wings and make a loud beat to find girls. We ended up seeing another couple later who told us what it was, can't tell you how sheepish we both were looking back on us wide-eyed and terrified over a forest chicken. Account 10. Back in 2010, I was doing a solo bike camping trip through the Gifford Pinchot National Forest in Washington State. Doing a back roads trip from Portland to Seattle using the Baby Shoe Pass route if you are familiar with the area. One day I was near Big Tire Junction and looking for a campsite. My plan was generally to find a random jeep trail and follow it until I saw a good campsite. The first trail I tried, I ran into a bear, so I rang my bike bell a bunch and scared it away. I turned around to find a new trail. I eventually did and found a good spot on a random jeep trail about 50 miles from the closest human habitation. I was at about 4,200 feet, so the mosquitoes were horrible. I had not brought a tent, so I crawled into my bag around 8.30 for some respite. Maybe 20 minutes after I went to bed, I heard an engine. I peeked my head out and saw a truck driving down the trail. I locked eyes with the guy driving it and he passed my camp and disappeared a bit down the road. I pulled out my map and confirmed that the trail I was on ended after descending the canyon for a mile or two. What is this guy doing? Why is he here so far from literally anything? Then I realized there were two humans on planet Earth who knew where I was. Me and this guy doing God knows what in the middle of a giant forest an hour away from any town or main road. Holy shit. I was pretty freaked, but ended up staying put. 30 minutes later, he came back up the trail, drove past me, and vanished. I had a hard time sleeping that night as I was nervous about the bear and the weirdo, but nothing happened. The next night, I camped at an abandoned campground near Taklok Lake. Despite a massive berm placed by the Forest Service, some yahoos arrived and proceeded to get wild and drunk and started blasting away with their guns. They definitely did not know I was there. Again, I hunkered down and woke up at 5 a.m. the next morning to slip out before they woke up. Weird trip, but damn do I miss having the kind of life where I could spend a week riding a bike in the woods alone. Account 11. Definitely a caterwauling barred owl in the middle of the night while camping in Shenandoah. Close second would be a bull elk bugle, also middle of the night, in Grand Canyon National Park. Sleeping in my hammock had me feeling very defenseless after having heard these eerie sounds. Account 12. I live in New Mexico. My dad loves hunting and was even a hunting guide for elk half of my life. We were hunting in southern NM and got back to camp the first night and started making dinner. Mountain spaghetti hits different. Strongly recommend. It was super dark, but we had a fire and headlamps, etc. It was about 9 p.m. and my dad had a baseball game playing over the radio. My cousin and I, myself being 10 and him being 12, heard just beyond our camp out in the trees this horrible wailing sound. It was super low in pitch at first, but bounced around as it progressed. 
It got closer and closer, taking brief pauses in between each wailing episode. When it's dark and your mind races in the mountains, being literal children, we thought we were dead. My dad grabbed a rifle, and considering he's been in the mountains his entire life, that was enough to make us run for the truck. My dad looked at us and said, if I don't come back, lock the doors. Well, he was messing with us, and it happened to be a group of wild horses that were pissed off because our camp inconvenienced them from their walking path. Another time, my dad and I were walking through the woods, and under a tree, a grouse bird was hanging out. We definitely startled it walking up behind it, and when it started flapping its wings, it sounded like a helicopter right next to us. I, again, thought we were dead. Account 13. Went hiking in a small local state park when I was probably eight or nine. Pretty fall morning with nothing but squirrels and fresh air. About an hour into the hike, we stopped to rest, and I wandered a little distance away. Saw an unusual-looking pile of leaves with a glint of white. Went to look, and it was a skeleton of a kid my age. Dad and me noped the heck out and called the police. They had us take them up to the site, asked us some questions, and sent us home. Dad tried a couple of times to call them for follow-up, but all we found out was the skeleton was human. I hope whoever the kid was got their name back and their family got an answer. Account 14. About 10 humans rushing a full-grown bear for photographs in Yellowstone. Stopped all traffic. Vacated cars in the middle of the road. I was sure someone was going to get clawed. Lucky for them, the bear must have been conditioned to it and fled into the woods. My faith in mankind dipped a lot that day. Account 15. When I was on a school trip, we were staying in cabins inside a national park. In the morning, we heard the girls screaming, so we ran outside to see the weird kid standing in front of the girls' cabin completely naked with a frog that he hunted, which was still alive, impaled on a stick. The crazy thing is that there were no consequences to what he did. Account 16. I was canoeing a river in Texas and saw no fewer than three cottonmouths in a tree overhanging the water. I do not usually mind snakes, but the idea of a venomous little bugger just dropping into your canoe is basically like being trapped in a closet with it. But every time you move, the floor moves under you. Account 17. When I was about 10, I was in the Smoky Mountains with my mom and aunt. We went on a trail that was called Rainbow Falls. A fairly easy trail, and my boredom kicked in halfway through. I could tell that the trail turned right up ahead. Then I noticed I could climb a little hill and run into the trail on the other side. So I climbed up this hill, and I was probably 100 meters off trail, when up ahead, 20 feet in front of me, two huge bucks raised up on their hind legs, then slammed their antlers together in a battle for dominance. I froze in place, scared they might see me, and both decide, no, forget that little dude. Count one. A rock the size of two trucks fell onto the place where my family stood 60 seconds ago. It killed eight people, and 20 were wounded. I was an eyewitness to a natural disaster. Account two. I didn't see it. I heard it. I'm kind of a night owl, and I was up at night outside in a forestry area in the sequoias, doing imagined gymnastics in my head, when out of nowhere I hear this lady laughing hysterically. I have my flashlight out, and there is nobody there. Not a single person in all directions with my high-powered flashlight. I went back inside, petrified. Scariest experience of my life. Me a believer in all sorts of stuff. Account 3. Scariest. Sudden cliff at the end of what I thought was a normal path. I was small and didn't notice I was off trail. Almost fell. Strangest. Guy coming down trail completely naked except for sneakers and a bike helmet he was casually holding as he walked. Not. Covering anything with the helmet, by the way. Just walking past two tweens. Me and sibling, our dog, and our dad. We all pretended to find the moss on the side of the trail much more interesting than it was a moment ago until he left. I still have no idea what that guy's deal was. My only guess was a streaker, but we were on a trail heading up to a mountain lake. Account 4. A former friend who, while we were tripping on LSD, started confessing to the girl he accidentally murdered. Then, realizing he said too much, tried playing it off as a joke before he started with the casual threats, if we said anything. Account 5. I was camped at Guadalupe National Park. 
I woke up in the middle of the night to a rustling noise, rolled over to find myself nose to nose with a skunk inside my tent. I managed to get out without getting sprayed, but it was the longest two minutes of my life. Account six, not really scary, but definitely a good story. In Algonquin Park in Canada, my family and I were driving around going somewhere, I forget where. And there was a young black bear cub on a rock close to the road. We named him Terry. Another time was when a random baby fox followed our car, so that's a thing. Account seven. When camping with a friend and a group of their friends in a backwater part of West Virginia, the campground we were going to camp at was full poor planning on our part. The one guy drove down from D.C. for this, so we decided to look around for a place. We find this area that looks like it was a parking lot at one point long ago. It was nice and secluded, plenty of wooded space to set up tents. My husband and I decided to go to bed around midnight. We are awoken sometime around one in the morning. Some drunken guys pulled into our random secluded area and want to join us. The group declines, telling the guys it is rather late and they happen to catch them right as they were getting ready to go to bed. Guys get pushy about joining the group. The group keeps declining. It's been a long day. It is late. We have a long trip ahead of us tomorrow. Suddenly the guys' tone changes. They want to know how the group found this spot. How long the group has been here? Has the group been hiking at all? And how far into the woods we have been? The group answered, and suddenly the guys declared it was late, and they really should be heading out, but wanted to know if the group wanted to buy any party favors before they left us for the night. Now maybe I've just seen too many horror movies, but I'm still convinced that those dudes were making drugs in those woods, and if the group's answers were anything other than what they were, there would have been seven bodies in those woods before sunrise. Maybe I'm just being paranoid and they were just some drunk locals looking to have some more fun before they went home, but I doubt it. Account 8. Spent a week hiking and camping with some college friends in Glacier National Park last year. Went out off the campsite for dinner and drinks at dusk one night. As two massive four-legged animals crossed the road about 100 yards up. Really the biggest creatures I've ever seen. They had long cat-like tails, so did not look like bears, elk, moose, or anything, but almost too large to be mountain lions. To this day, my friends and I have no idea what we witnessed. Account 9. Not a national park, but just hiking in Hawaii. My friend and I went off the trails and decided to hike through a creek for six miles barefoot. Anyway, we saw a bird that looked insanely prehistoric, had a huge wingspan of 15 FT. We weren't quick enough to take our phones out in video or take pictures. We still joke and say that we saw a pterodactyl. Account 10. Not even six months ago, my husband, my 10-year-old stepson, he just turned 11, myself and our dog went on a family road trip from Portland, Oregon, the area we live, to Mount St. Helens on the outskirts of Cougar, Washington. We drove around and veered off at random down a road that looked like it might have potential hiking areas. We ended up parked at the beginning of a blocked off road where only foot traffic could continue. Starting at the base of the mountain, we passed a few people walking back towards us in the opposite direction. As we continued walking further, they shouted to us that further ahead was patches of unmelted snow and ice. Ignoring their warning, we pressed on. Without a solid plan as a family, we checked our phone map and realized we were on a trailhead leading up to Climber's Bivouac so we decided that would be our turnaround point. Despite it being a three-mile hike, we had a very enjoyable time. As we climbed higher toward Climber's Bivouac, the ice and snow became deeper, mainly in shaded areas for the first two-thirds of the hike. However, the last third, and especially after reaching our turnaround spot, the snow and ice reached over five feet deep. We had to carefully navigate through soft spots that occasionally trapped our legs, making our progress tedious. On our way back down, I noticed our dog suddenly staying closer and more alert, which was unusual as he had been running ahead and playing freely on the way up. Knowing there are mountain lions and other predators in the area, I became concerned. About 20, 25 feet behind us in the brush and trees, we heard something pounding the ground and emitting an ape-like noise, similar to the territorial warning sounds gorillas make. My son and I froze, looking to my husband and our dog for reassurance. With a shaking voice, I asked my husband, Did you hear that? He reassured me, Oh, that was Spike. 
he started gagging and gasping after. Despite my certainty about what I heard and from where, and despite having seen Spike get sick before without making such a noise, I chose to believe him. We continued cautiously, feeling briefly reassured until we heard it again, closer this time only six to ten feet to my right, deeper into the wilderness brush. At that moment I was focused on our dog's movements and realized my husband had lied to keep us calm. This was not even halfway back down, we still had over two and a half miles to go. The rest of the descent was tense, with occasional snapping branches, and based on our dog's behavior, whatever it was seemed to follow us most of the way down, stopping about a quarter mile from our car. I will never forget that day. Especially after that event, I never venture into the wilderness without being prepared. Account 11. My friend was camping alone near the Appalachian Trail for a few days. One night, as he walked, he felt the sensation of being watched. Looking around, he confirmed his suspicion. The path he was on was a gravel road, wide enough for a car, mostly flat with a steep incline on one side. About 15 feet back and a few feet up to his right, he saw a pair of large cat eyes. Spotting a large tree limb on the ground, he wedged his foot under it without turning his back to the cat, kicked it into the air, catching it in his hand. He angrily waved it at the cat, shouting for it to leave. Fortunately, it immediately retreated. Relieved, my friend decided to sleep in his car that night instead of his tent. He cut his trip short, driving home the next morning. It had been too dark to identify the type of cat, so he never knew exactly what had been stalking him. Account 12. The strangest thing is when someone has an emergency on the trail and has to use their underwear for cleanup but doesn't bother to bury it. I always wonder about these people. Were they alone or with a friend? How uncomfortable was their hike out while going commando? Did this ruin hiking for them? Account 13. It was night when I peeked out of my tent after hearing something outside. I aimed a flashlight and saw about ten eyeballs staring at me. It scared the heck out of me, so I zipped up my tent and held on to a hatchet for dear life. I didn't sleep at all. When daylight came, I cautiously looked around. I glanced up at a tree and saw a mother opossum with a few babies on her back. The flashlight had made their eyes glow brightly, and for a moment, I thought it was an alien. I'm glad I didn't harm them. Opossums are really cool. Account 14. Northern Utah, saw a moose, tried to get a good picture by following it into the woods, quickly changed my mind after seeing his size. Had a 90 diamondback rattlesnake cross a dirt road in front of me, I was scared to stick my head out of truck to get a good look. FL. I guess I could have started with I got attacked by a 9-2 alligator while snorkeling in a spring run here in FL with my seven-year-old son, tried to bite my fucking head off, 50 stitches and staples, broken eye socket, but no worse for wear and tear. Career and modeling ruined, just had to keep my day job. Account 15. It wasn't in a national park, but one time I saw a gigantic goose-looking thing, and there were geese there too, and it was about 6x bigger. While we do have swans in Oregon, this pond was in the middle of Portland. Account 16. I was in an actual tsunami while swimming at a national seashore in Hawaii. I did not know it was a tsunami until about two days later, when they announced it on the news. It seems like the water rose one to two feet while I was in it. I was half swimming, half wading, when I noticed that my feet could not reach the bottom. So I swam a few strokes towards shore, and then I was in very shallow water. I did not feel the water suck out or push back in, but it was strangely turbulent. As a rule of thumb, whenever something is weird in the ocean, get away from it. So that's what I did, and when I got out of the water, I noticed that the line of wet sand had moved inland about 20 or 30 IFT. I shrugged it off as just a freak wave and left the beach. The crazy thing is, a couple hours earlier, I was in a restaurant having breakfast, and the news on the radio mentioned that there was a tsunami watch in effect because of an earthquake in the South Pacific. This was not a warning bulletin, but just a mention of it in the news. No tsunami siren went off. I definitely would have heard it. I was only a couple hundred yards away from one. Count 17. Not national, sorry, but a small state park right in the middle of my city. I was hiking the east side of the hill and came across a small clearing that had piles of small bones all over the place. A little unnerving. Then a little further south I came across a deer carcass. Just the head and skin. No bones or muscles. Right next to that were very canine feet sticking out from under a big pile of sticks. 
Believe it or not, I went back there a couple times. Deer was gone. I think I may have been lucky to make it out of there. Account 18. Being stalked while hiking in Arches NP. So Arches was bonkers busy this summer, and my partner and I kept missing our chance to get in. We decide to make one last ditch effort before leaving the area and see if we can go at night, sleep on the DL in our truck, and hike at sunrise. And then we realize there's a full moon that night. So we drive up to Devil's Garden, take a nap, and then wake up around midnight with this amazingly bright and huge full moon and set out on our hike. It was just incredible. Seeing the arches at night like that was something truly too magical to put into words. We did most of the hike silently because it was just so magical and it felt right not to fuck it up with conversation. Near the farthest part of the trail, heading towards Landscape Arch, there's a spot where the trail passes through a little narrow valley thing. The trail is high, and there's some bushes down below the trail on both sides. And then there's high cliffs with swifts, birds, singing loudly on either side of that. When we're passing through, I hear this tiny but distinctly weird noise in the bush, almost like the sound of quickly rubbing your hands together a few times. Everything seemed pretty normal, though, and I figure we just startled a bird or a deer or something. We hike to Landscape Arch, sit for a while, and turn around to hike back. When we get to exactly the same spot in the trail, I hear the same noise again, only this time a lot closer to us, and the bird suddenly went completely silent. My brain, the hair on the back of my neck, and everything within me just started screaming, Mountain Lion! I didn't want to panic my partner, so I just said, I think there's something here. We need to keep walking, and I don't think we should stop, and I started clapping my hands together with each step. We hiked the whole way back to the car, feeling it following us, fighting the urge to break out in a run and being way too terrified to stop or turn around look. Getting close to the parking lot, the trail opened up one last time and we both felt it stop following us. The creepy sensation just melted away. When we're back in the parking lot, he looks at me and says, so we just spent the last 20 minutes being followed by a mountain lion, right? And I'm like, yep! Told a ranger what happened the next day, she was like, yep! Needless to say, though it was magical for a while, I don't recommend silent night hikes. And don't fucking hike alone in the evening or overnight. We're both tall, big, healthy-looking people, and we're walking close together. Otherwise, I feel very certain one of us would have been big meow mix. Account 1. Oh, I have two good stories for this. One was just a dead deer. Somebody shot it in the middle of a completely empty National Forest campground, chopped off its head, and just left everything in the middle of the road. You could see the bloody shoe marks walking away as if the person kicked the head a couple of feet. Slept with an axe next to the sleeping bag that night. Second one happened on some random national forest campground in New Mexico, I think, middle of nowhere. There was one other group of campers there. They had a 10 feet bonfire, everybody wore KKK style costumes, and they were standing around the fire and talking, chanting. At the entrance to their campsite, they had a big wooden cross stuck into a pile of boulders, draped in barbed wire, and a bloody, at least with red stains, white piece of cloth was hanging across it. No idea what that was, but it kind of creeped us out, and we didn't sleep well that night. Account 2. Family was watching some bears from their car and at a safe distance. The dad put the small child on the car roof so he could get a better view. When the bear moved, the family got in the car to follow, but forgot the kid. They only got a couple feet before someone yelled at them to stop. The family only laughed. They didn't seem to realize what a serious situation this was. Account 3. I was stalked by a mountain lion for about 2.5 miles of hiking through Bob Marshall National Forest. The first signs were terrifying. It had been raining all day, and we saw tracks in the mud. The thing is, each track had less and less water in the further we went along. Not too long after that, I spotted it on a cliffside, walking with us without breaking eye contact for even a moment. Our group was a mixed bunch of generations, some slower than others. But once we noticed the fresh tracks, we made sure to stay tightly packed. I think that saved someone from getting mauled by the big kitty cat. Account 4. Only this year, while driving through a national park in South Africa, on the side of the road there was a dead female body. Don't really know how she died and why she was there laying in the middle of nowhere was pretty scary. Account 5. 
So several years ago, me and a few buddies were out horseback riding in the Shawnee National, southern Illinois. We came across an overhang of rock and earth that went back pretty deep like a cave. We decided to take a break and check it out and let the horses get a drink, and one of my buddies says to shut up and listen. We got quiet, and it sounded like from far back in this cave a grown woman saying, Help me. Please help me. We got the hell out of there and told my grandpa about the situation. He called his friend, and a few of them went out looking, but never seen or heard anything. Pretty crazy to be typing this out hunting on some property connected to the Shawnee. Account 6. At Yellowstone, I once was shocked to see a dad walking with his kids up the side of one of the park's unnamed geysers. Didn't stick around to see them break through the crust and get scalded. A new chapter for death in Yellowstone. Count seven. People constantly use the national forest to illegally dump trash. I was squirrel hunting, and I noticed that someone had dumped a child's wooden bed frame into the brush. I got closer and found on the ground a pile of broken and smashed picture frames with sentimental family photos still inside them. I wish that trash pile could have told me the story about how it came to be. Account eight. Once I saw a wolf while talking to my two friends. I was facing the wolf, but not the two guys. He went so close behind them that I just went silent scared in the middle of the sentence. When the wolf passed, only then I told friends what just happened. Account 9. Nighttime drive in a South African wildlife reserve. The whole observation car is looking towards where the spotlight of the car illuminates the carcass of a giraffe, which is eaten up by a trio of male lions. At some point I hear the sound of ooh, ooh behind us. I turn and there's over 20 pairs of yellowish eyes glowing in the darkness. A whole pack of hyenas trotting around in the dark, waiting for an opportunity to snip away some of the lion's kill. The situation was absolutely safe, but it gave me a good chill, thinking about how pants-shittingly terrifying this would be alone and on foot. Account 10. I was solo camping in the Roosevelt National Forest, sitting in a camp chair in a clearing looking up at the stars. From the edge of the clearing I heard the freakiest sound, kind of like someone screaming with a hoarse voice, but definitely not human. I figured it was probably just some nocturnal animal doing whatever it is they do, and decided to play it cool. Then I realized I was completely kidding myself, so I quickly packed up my chair and skedaddled down the hill to my campsite and into my tent. Count 11. There I was, four days into a seven-day solo trek in Glacier National Park. The going was rough. It was mid-July, but winter always looms above 7,000 feet. Just as far from the end as I was from the start, on trails more suited for skiing than hiking, when I heard it behind me. I turned around to see a blogger looking for other people to write their listicle. Account 12. The body of a Sasquatch. Humanoid, but larger and taller. Covered with long gray hair. Face down, dead in a small clearing on the side of a hill. Visible from the main road, about 200 feet down. Account 13. Pulled some food for dinner from the bear box. Left door open as I was returning for more stuff. Walked 10 feet. Bear uses this opportunity to grab a bag of dog food from the box and hightail it. Tahoe. Account 14. I grew up in Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee. Not scary. But a strange thing is there was a bridge that goes over a lake nearby that everyone would go and party at. There was an old homeless guy that lived in the woods there that everyone just called Mountain Man Dan. He would always come and chill with us. He was friendly and we would share drinks, food, or drugs with him. There were always rumors that he had murdered people in Florida or something and had been hiding in the mountains since. Account 15. I used to live near a nature reserve and close by were mountains with a lot of nature. I live in Washington, so there's a lot of animals and nature. One night I was up late and suddenly I hear this incredibly loud and wretched scream. It woke my husband up, and nothing wakes him up. I think it was a cougar or something, but it sounded incredibly close, and the nature reserve was at least two miles away. This sounded like it was right in the apartment parking lot. Account 16. Not as extreme as some other stories, but several years ago I was camping with family, and we had our dogs with us. Some fellow campers walking their dogs strolled past to warn us that a rattlesnake was headed our way. We quickly rushed the dogs inside and alerted the rangers. The snake got close to our campsite, but not close enough. 
and eventually moved away until the ranger pulled up with a bucket and snake hook. They put it in the bucket, loaded up the truck, and drove off towards the mountains to set it free far from camp. Had those people not walked by and warned us, we would not have known about the snake until it was in our campsite, and snakes are predators to dogs. Account 17. It was a giant fly. I thought it was a toy at first, but when I poked it with a stick, it started flying. My dumbass thought it was from Australia. I live in the Balkan region of Europe. I was five at the time. Account 18. Mark Twain National Park, 2016. I was about 16 and me and my older friends were camping. We were sitting around the campfire, bullshitting as usual, when suddenly we hear a blood-curdling scream in the distance. We froze. We all looked at each other, and then another scream, even closer. We ran as fast as possible to my friend Joey's car and hightailed it out of there. Never went camping again. I wanted to never go outside at all again after that. But I hope it wasn't a person having a manic attack or something. Count one. We were at a state campground in Oregon. I cannot remember its name, but it was a managed campground on a lake with assigned lots and rangers. We used to go there every summer for years. It was a natural lake, with no dams or other structures, and on the other side of the lake were rich houses. One evening, we were getting ready to cook dinner over the fire when a siren went off, like an air raid or a spillway opening. There was no spillway in the area, and we had never heard it before. The people in the lots near us were all just as confused. My parents decided to leave early and packed us all into the van. We never went back there. Account 2. Years ago, I was four-wheel driving on Crown land, what we call public land in Canada. For some reason, the British Crown thinks they own it and came across a very large pine tree with 75 to 100 rather old dolls hanging by their necks from the branches. Some were porcelain, some fabric, some plastic. This was about 10 kilometers behind a very small hamlet in rural British Columbia. Account 3. One time years ago, I was camping in Olympic National Park and it was raining very hard one night. I woke up to the sound of a tree falling very close to me and thought I was a goner. It turns out it was at the campsite next to mine. It scared the crap out of me. Account 4. About five to six years ago, we went camping and saw a UFO. I have a photo of it. What is worse is there was literally nothing we could have done. We thought about leaving, but ended up staying. I kept the fire going all night, but seriously, not something I would like to experience again. Account 5. I was in California, and my husband and I were going to set up our tent when we noticed a huge yellow billboard at the campsite. It said, Caution. Plague danger. Do not camp near holes. Do not touch wildlife. Watch for symptoms, etc. It was probably a relatively small risk, as I am not in the habit of playing with wild marmots, but not a chance I was willing to take at the time. Account 6. I was charged at by a ram on the Bright Angel Trail an hour into a rim-to-rim -rim hike of the Grand Canyon. It could have easily head-butted me right off the cliff. He stopped both charges about five feet in front of me as I was preparing to lock up like an offensive tackle. One of many precarious animal encounters on a three-month, 21 National Park road trip this past summer. Account 7. A grizzly bear from about 200 yards away across a shallow ravine in the Bob Marshall Wilderness, Lewis and Clark National Forest, Montana. I was backpacking with my girlfriend and we were about 100 miles in during a 30-day trek. It would take a good five days to hike out from even that point at 20 miles per day. We froze. It took notice of us and stared for a few minutes and sniffed. It looked to be about 10 feet tall on its hindquarters. It grew bored with us and slowly moved on. Since it was nearing late afternoon, we knew we had to set up our tent soon. Worst night ever, settling down in his likely territory. We took turns sleeping in shifts so that we would have some advance notice of an attack. This was in the time before mobile phones, satellite phones, and bear spray. So we were completely on our own. The arrival of morning was never so sweet as then. By the way, the Bob Marshall, at least at that time, was where they relocated the misbehaving bears from touristed areas. We likely looked to the bear like we were carrying tasty ice cream cones. Lucky for us, if he was a bad bear, he was not hungry. Account 8. My country's largest national park has elephants. We were driving around while I was still very young, 
admiring the wildlife and such when we made a turn and came face to face with the biggest African elephant bull I have seen in my life. It charged the car and my dad somehow managed to out-reverse it before it stormed away into the bush again. I still have a fear of elephants when driving around the park. Count nine, Chiricahua National Monument, Arizona, 1994. My family took me there as a kid on vacation. We were walking a trail when a herd of about 30 coatamundis crossed the trail in front of us. The rangers said they are really rare that far north. Count 10, Estes Park two different times. The first time my little group and I were walking around Sprague Lake looking at the water. Then all of a sudden a big moose just walked up behind us, looked out over the lake with us for a minute, then walked right into the lake. He must have been 15 to 20 feet away. He was totally chill, but at the time it was not cool to be so close to a moose. More recently at Estes, my friend and I hiked all the way up to Hayayaha Lake, 10,500 feet elevation. We were about to sit down and have lunch when it started to thunderstorm. But the thing was that high up, the thunder seemed like it was coming from next to you, not above you. So we boogied and ate lunch a bit later. 11. Obligatory, not American, but... I found half of a moped scooter in my local county forest while going for a walk. Just half of the moped. The front was intact, and it looked like it had been cut just before the engine and seat connected. I was really confused as to how it got there, but guessed it was most probably stolen and dumped. I came back to the same place a few weeks later, and it was gone. No signs that it was ever there. Account 12. Not a national park but there was this one popular place an hour away from where I lived, and there seemed to be a body on rocks, stomach face down. The body was behind a fence. I do not know if it was real, or if it was, if he was dead, but that was strange. For some reason, no one cared. Account 13. More experienced than seen, but some guy was following me around picking up everything I looked at in a store in Yellowstone and did the same thing with my mom. Sounds rather benign, but it just felt really weird. Crowded and stalked, I guess. We wanted to go check out something nearby after the shop, but decided against it because we just wanted to get out of there. Account 14. A drunk, large, angry biker in the Black Hills. Not during Sturgis. He looked like he could pull my head off and shit down my neck, and I am not a small dude either. Also, had a smallish dead oak tree fall down about 10 feet behind me in a national wildlife reserve in North Texas. It scared me half to death because it would have broken my head open. Account 15. Was camping with some friends in Ocala National Forest. Me and one friend were sleeping in a tent, the other in the car. We both woke up around midnight from hearing footsteps around the tent, and gators flopping around in the nearby lake, which was scary enough. Then we hear what sounds like a bear roaring the most vicious roar I have ever heard in my life. I was never more scared than at that moment we were both completely paralyzed with fear. Turns out it was our friend in the car and he accidentally turned the windshield wipers on. Account 16, UFO. We were staring at a really bright star for ages and all of a sudden it moved across the sky and then faded out and disappeared. The other one was a fox. It was strange because foxes are timid and usually avoid people, but this one came right into the light and stared at us. It got spooked because my partner stood up, so it did a little jump and ran off. Account 17. I am a hunter. I like to shoot recreationally. I own a fluctuating number of guns, so I was reasonably comfortable with the idea of guns and shooting. But when I was driving through the Mojave Desert, I noticed that every street sign had at least one bullet hole in it. I found that unnerving. So far of anywhere, I felt so exposed. Account 18. Backpacking after midnight with no lights but a full moon on Halloween last year. I had to go off trail and make my own campsite. Desperately tired and looking for a non-sloped hill to sleep on, I started walking parallel to the path a good distance away. My girlfriend did the same thing a little farther out. She stumbled upon a campsite with a stone campfire ring and a stick table set up with a small animal skull on it. It was creepy as hell. I accused her of witchcraft and conjuring it up when we needed it. 